This KDP book sells between 4,700 to 9,000 copies per month, and this one between 337 to 660 per month, which at around 74 cents profit per book brings in a monthly income of 250 to 488 dollars per month. Now this may not sound a lot, but once you've created the books and it sits on Amazon, it can bring in this income month after month, which many would call a passive income, much like songwriters, authors, and patent holders. So we're going to look at what these books are, how to create the interiors fast, followed by the all important keywords to help get your book seen by customers with a free gift I've got for you to help you along. So these books are scissor skills books, essentially consist of shapes, lines, and objects, which kids can cut around to help improve their fine motor skills and are aimed at the four to seven year old age group. Here's an example, and we can already see on the cover, we've got those shapes, objects, and lines. And if we scroll down, we can see we've got these dotted lines here that kids just cut along. Another example, again, the cover shows what's in the interior, and we've got these objects here that kids can cut around and cut along. Now, when I'm going into a niche, I do what's called niche validation. And essentially, I'm asking myself, are books in this niche making any sales? And I have this bestsellers rank rule of less than 300,000, which don't worry, I'll explain to you what that is in a moment. Then I look at the potential profits and I look at whether the search results on that first page are in fact similar to KDP books. Now, recently I had an example where someone asked me to look at their book, which wasn't making any sales. And when I went to Amazon, put in the search term or their targeted keyword, what came up was just spiral bound books, which we can't actually make on KDP at the moment. And so Amazon was telling me what customers were actually searching for. And so this KDP book wasn't what customers were searching for and therefore wasn't likely to make any sales. Then I also look at whether there are any interesting looking sub niches. So over at Amazon, I normally put in just a broad search term related to the niche. In this case, scissor skills. And what I do is scroll through and have a look at the books. And more importantly, I'm looking at these numbers here, which are the best sellers ranks. Now I do have a free plugin installed called DS Amazon Quick View, which shows me these numbers on the front page rather than having to click on each book and find out what the figure is. And what I'm looking for are three or more books with best sellers ranks of less than 300,000. Because if it fulfills that criteria, I know books in this niche are making sales and therefore there is a market for this type of book. And straight away we can see we've got three books here with bestsellers ranks of less than 300,000. So that will fulfill my criteria. And even when we scroll down, many of these books actually fulfill that criteria. So this looks very promising. In terms of potential profit, this book here is a KDP book selling at 5.99 with a bestsellers rank of 11,362, which if we put into a book sales calculator, we can see that this comes out to between 337 to 660 books per month. And this type of book would be making estimated royalties of around 74 cents per book. And so this particular book is bringing in between 250 to 488 dollars per month. So now we come to the second stage of the video, which is the actual creation of an interior, which is what a lot of people find challenging with these types of books. Now, these types of books can either have color images or black and white lined images. If your book does have color images, it is gonna cost a lot more to create. Therefore, you're gonna to have to charge a lot more, which may actually price you out of the market. So you'll find that most of these books do have black and white images in the interior. So we can take our black and white lined image, or as I'm gonna show you in a moment, we can take a color image, convert it into a black and white lined image. Then we need to create the dotted line around the image with a little scissor icon. Then we need to put that image on a page. Now we can do this in lots of different types of software. Today, we're gonna to do this in Canva because it's easy to use, it's free, and it's web-based. And what we do is build up each page and then convert it into a PDF file, which we can then upload to Amazon via the KDP platform. So let's start off with finding our images. Now I'm gonna show you a really easy way and a slightly harder way uh, using AI to create an image. So here we are on Creative Fabrica. Now there are many sites out there where you can find images. 
I like Creative Fabrica. I've been using this for years. Now, I'll leave a link to it down below in the description, but if you do sign up for it, you do actually get your first month for free, which allows you to download up to 10 different uh, assets. So you could use those to create your book initially. Now, I just put in scissor skills here, and we've got a lot of resources. We've not only got images, but we've also got pages that are ready to use in the interiors books. Now, what I wouldn't recommend doing is just downloading a whole interior from something like Creative Fabrica and uploading that to KDP, because you may find that there's publishers that have done that already with the same interior, which could lead to issues with things like duplicate content. But what you can do is take images from a variety, a different number of interiors and put them all together to create a more unique interior. Now I did a search for farm animals and found these clip art images here and we've got full print on demand usage allowed so we can use these in our books. So I've downloaded those and I'm just going to drag them into my image editing software, which in this case is going to be Affinity Designer. You can do what I'm going to show you here in software like Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape, which is absolutely free of charge. So I'm going to take one of these images, click on it, Command C or Control C to copy. I'm going to create a new document, remove those margins and Command V or Control V to paste. Just enlarge that a little. Next, we want to draw a dotted outline around our image. So over on the left hand side, I'm going to click on the pen tool. And then we're just going to start at any point on our image. So left click of the mouse then move along, left click of the mouse again. Now you can use these Bezier control points to alter the curve of your line. Then I'm going to click on option, left click of the mouse just to delete that control point. And then we go along the same, draw another curve which matches the outline of our image and so on. Now we'll speed this up so I don't bore you completely with the whole process. And so we have our image outlined. Next, top right, hit on the color tab, click on the stroke, then open the stroke panel. Now we can increase the thickness of our line like so. But what we want is a dotted line. So we'll hit on the dash line style. And these dashes are a bit close together. So I'm just going to alter this figure here to two and decrease the thickness. What I'm also going to do is just alter the color by going to the color tab, clicking on the stroke selector, and then just altering the luminosity to create a gray color. So now the only thing we need to do next is just to add a little scissor image to this. So again, I went to Creative Fabrica, searched for scissors and downloaded a scissor image. So I'm just going to copy that Command C or Control C, then go to our image and paste that into place, Command V or Control V. Now you can see this is very large. So holding down shift, I'm just going to reduce the size of that and move that into position on our image. So now we've got an image for a page of our book. Now this is a relatively simple image because we're only going to be targeting very young children. So now what we want to do is save our image as a .png file with a transparent background. So what I'm just going to do is draw, holding down left click of the mouse, a bounding box around the whole image. Then hit File, Export, and we're going to have PNG, where it says Area, click Selection Only, and click on Export. Now, we, before we put that onto the page of our book, I'm going to show you how we can get an image using AI. So we're going to be using Midjourney. So here I put in this prompt, flat vector kids illustration, duck on plane background. And we've got these images here. I'm going to choose this one bottom left, which is image number three. Click on upscale image number three. Here it is. I'm going to right click on that, save image. So the next step is to go to vectorizer.ai. And we're going to convert our image into a lined vector diagram. So we'll take that duck image that we've just downloaded and drop it into Vectorizer. And at the moment, at the time of doing this video, this is absolutely free of charge. So on our right, we've got our vector image. So hit download. Now where it says draw style, just select stroke shape outlines, and this will create a lined image. So we're going to download that. Then the image we've downloaded, I'm going to drag into Affinity Designer. Now you'll see we've got this outlined image here, which looks very faint. So left click of the mouse, just drag a bounding box 
around that image. In the color box top right, select the stroke, dial the luminosity down to black, then open up the stroke panel and we can increase the thickness of our stroke. And so now we've got an image which looks a lot more useful. So we're gonna go ahead and just draw bounding boxes around these elements and delete them. If you find you have difficulty selecting them, you can just click on them and hit delete. So that cleans up the image. So now, like before, I'm just gonna do a dotted line around this image. So that's our image created. Draw a bounding box around it. File, export, PNG, selection only, export. So now we've got our two images. So we're gonna head over to Canva. So top right, hit create a design, then custom size, change this to inches, and our book is going to be 8.5 by 11 inches. Hit create new design. So here we've got our page. Left hand side, click uploads, and then just drag in those two images that we've just created. Once they've uploaded, just click on an image and position it on the page. Now you will need to keep these images within what's called the margins. If you don't understand what that means, then if you just have a search on my channel, I've done a whole video on bleed and margin. Then click on add a page. Now we don't want to go putting our image on this page because you can imagine we've got this image here that kids are going to cut around. This is going to be the back of that page. So it's going to be on the other side. So we don't want an image there, otherwise a child would just ruin that image on the other side of the page. So we need to keep that blank. So we go to page three. So we add a page, then add our next image, enlarge that, move it to around the middle, then click on add page. Again, we would leave that blank. Click on our next page. And here's a useful feature. You can go to grid view and you can see how our pages are being built up. So page five would have an image, page six would be blank, page seven would have an image and you would build it up like so. Once you have created the interior, you hit share, download, drop down menu, PDF print, and then just click on download and it will download that whole PDF to your computer, which is then ready to upload to KDP when it comes to actually putting all your book together. So now we come to the third part of the video and that is getting your book seen on Amazon by getting it ranked on that first page of Amazon. Now there's a number of factors here that are involved. There's the keywords, there's the cover design, which affects the click-through rate. There's a conversion rate, which is the sales, which gives you the sales history. And there's also the reviews. What I'm gonna look at here are the keywords. Basically, what keywords are, are those search terms that customers type into Amazon when they're searching for something to buy. Now, keywords are important because by using keywords correctly in our book, places like title, subtitle, seven keyword boxes, we're actually telling Amazon what our book is about and so can help, along with these other factors, getting your books ranked and seen by customers, which is essential if you're going to make any sales of your books. Now, I have done a video on how I go about finding keywords. And I've also done a video on how I use those keywords in my books to give them the best chance of getting ranked. Now, I'll leave a link to both of those videos down below in the description. But essentially what I do is I take a search term like scissor skills. I put it into the search bar and Amazon will give us all these suggestions here, which are very useful because Amazon is telling us what customers are searching for and also customers tend to click on these suggestions. I've also got a plugin installed called AMZ Suggestion Expander, which gives these other related search terms as well, again, which customers are searching for. And what I do is I take these and I'll put each keyword into the search bar and see what else Amazon suggests. And I'll put these into a spreadsheet. Now for each of these keywords, I look at the number of results, which you can see here for scissor skills is 2000. But if we change our search term for say something like sea life, which was a suggestion there, we can see this time it's only 272. And so this gives us an idea for the competition of a keyword. And what I do is I tend to try and get my books ranked for less competitive keywords, those keywords with 1000 search results or less. So by doing that, I'm hopefully going to get my book ranked for a less competitive keyword. Now you may say, well, that's good, but you're not gonna get as many sales. But the idea is to get some sales, build up a sales history and hopefully get some reviews. And eventually, over time, it may take weeks, months, even in some competitive niches, may take a couple of years. 
your books will then start to rank for those more competitive keywords. So I build a spreadsheet here. We've got all the search terms that are being searched for on Amazon. There's about 97 keywords in total. And for each keyword, I put in the Amazon search results. And where available, we've got the Google monthly searches. Now it's not essential to know that, but if we know that a particular keyword does have a high number of Google monthly searches, it just gives that keyword a bit of extra uh, strength, if you like. And now with this niche, there are quite a lot of keywords with search results of 1000 or less. Now I've saved you the time in doing all this yourself and I've actually uploaded this keyword sheet in PDF, .csv and Excel format to my Gumroad shop and it's absolutely free of charge. I'll leave a link to it down below in the description. So you can go along there, you can download the keywords. There's also a free guide sheet in there as well and it can just give you that sort of head start on this particular niche if you are interested in creating these types of books. Now, if you are new to this whole publishing business, you may find this a bit daunting. And I suggest actually starting with something more simple like a lined notebook. So you may want to look at this playlist here, my book tutorials playlist, where I go through all those initial steps of creating a lined journal and uploading it and publishing it to Amazon. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you very much for your time, it's very much appreciated. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, goodbye.